so I just went through the Rust Workshop prerequisites on a recently set up Mac and updated the instructions. And I'm going to go through this with you. So please follow along. Please do this before the meetup because it's going to take probably at least 30 minutes of just downloading and compiling just nonsense stuff that we don't want to have to deal with on a shared internet connection. So magic editing, this is now the first thing you do. First, you need to install the basic compiler tools, including Git and C language tools. So on Mac to do that, you're going to type Xcode hyphen select space dash dash install. And I'm getting an error that says it's already installed because I've already installed it in the past. Um, again, this could take, depending on internet speed and other factors, might be five to 15 minutes. Um, on Linux, it's usually quite a bit quicker. And then on Windows, I'm not quite sure, but you need to have the VC package, which is the, uh, the I guess Visual Studio or Visual Code, or I, I don't know what it is. Um, but VC package is a thing for Windows. It's um, official from Microsoft, as you can see here, and you're gonna need that. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is install Rust. If you don't have Rust installed already, you can copy and paste this webby install URL command, and it will go grab it from the same command that rustup.rs is, or you can go to rustup.rs and follow the official instructions. Uh, once you have Rust installed, or if you already have Rust installed, what we wanna do is do a Rust Up update and make sure that we all have the 1.46.0 toolchain installed and set to the default, because we all wanna be on the same version for this, especially if you're watching in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this block here. And this on my machine isn't gonna take very long because it just did it. But on any other machine, this could take a while. So now we all have the stable version of Rust and the 1.46.0, which is stable as of today, installed. And uh, just a couple things that I want to note. We explicitly set the default here to 1.46.0 for the sake of time continuum. Future, well, not past, but um, you know this is the exact version that we're working on here. Uh, so when you're done with this workshop, you want to run this again with Rust Up Default Stable, and that's also the very last instruction here. So just be aware of that. You don't want to be stuck on that version. We're just setting it here. Also, in any code directory, you can run Rust Override Set and then give it a, a version or a channel name, and it will set it for that directory, a directory that has a cargo.toml file. You can also run specific uh, Rust or cargo commands with the prefix Rust up run and then a version or tag to run the specific version. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and continue here. We're, the next thing that we need to do is install the, um, the ARM target. So your CPU on your computer is probably an AMD 64. So whether it's a Mac or Linux or Windows, you're running on AMD 64, but the microcontroller here is an ARM Cortex-M processor. So we need the ARM compiler toolchain installed and that is what this command is gonna do for us. It's just going to download another toolchain, just like the stable channel toolchain or the 1.46.0 toolchain. This is just gonna give us the different version of it, the ARM version. Now. Uh, you will also need to have the FTDI USB driver. And this is for, so this programmer has an FTDI, that, that's USB to serial adapter inside. So in order to be able, for your computer to be able to see and understand this, that driver has to be installed and it is not installed by default, I don't believe on any operating system. Although if you've done any sort of um, embedded work before, you probably do have it installed. That said, uh, on Mac, you need to have brew in order to get this. So if you don't have brew, here's a command to install brew. Again, webinstall.dev slash brew. But once you have brew, it's brew install lib ftdi. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in. It won't take too long because I've already installed it. Um, on Linux, you're going to get it from apt-get, and on Windows, this is why you needed VC package, because you're going to install it through VC package. All right, let's see if that's finished up, and it has. Okay, so now what we're going to install is the 
Cargo Flash and Cargo Embed. And these tools are what allow us to push our compiled code. So we have Rust, we have the target toolchain for ARM, uh, we have the FTDI driver. When we build a Rust binary, we push it through the FTDI driver's protocol, through the programmer, to the microcontroller over these wires here. It just bit twiddles and uploads it, if you will, to the microcontroller. And the cargo flash and cargo embed tools allow us to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those, which again, because I've already installed them, isn't gonna take any time, but for you might take 20 minutes or so. Magic video editing AJ here. So it turns out that the version of Cargo Flash and Cargo Embed need to be version 0.80 because there were some breaking changes in 0.9 that the code and configuration in the repository has not yet been updated for. That may change in the future, but whatever it is, we'll make sure to keep it tagged in the documentation. I'm going to go ahead and install the exact correct version of Cargo Flash and Cargo Embed, and now we'll move on. And then also the nice thing about these tools as opposed to other tools that exist for um, debugging on microcontrollers, uh, they, they have a nice built-in feature where you can get, uh, it'll treat your local console, so your, your, what you're running locally, it will treat as the output for this device. As you can see, this device doesn't have a screen, uh, we're going to attach a screen onto it later, but right now, if we want to get debugging information off of this, uh, unless we're going to SOS through an LED, we've got no way to do it. And so the cargo embed tools allow us to use our local computer um, as a debugging interface. So that's very nice.